was, it seemed to me like explicit consent. Right. But uh, of course, I was, I could have been wrong. So, right. here we go. of course, I was going to ask. All right. Was on. Uh, we are here with Daniel. Yeah. Oh, Daniel? Yes. Uh, spilled a little bit of coffee earlier. Right now, there's only two of us in the tent. There are going to be three, hopefully, tonight. Okay. Um, it's possible that we'll have six men here, although I think it's more likely that we'll have five. But as you can feel, it's nice and warm. Right. Yeah, it is nice and warm. That was, uh, that was one of the concerns I had was, what, uh, do you have enough for you guys to stay warm out here? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean... Donations are always very appreciated, and uh, we won't turn anyone away. And the the items that we get uh -huh. will actually go to anybody that needs them. We have a little mm. free store. I don't know if you had a chance. Well, to we happen to notice. Well, we happen to notice it on the back. It's beautiful, and uh, no, I ended up getting a hat from there, but everything else I brought from home. And yeah. Definitely recommend if anyone's going to come down here, try to bring an Arctic sleeping bag because it is going to get. I was going to say, this feels nice and warm right now, of But during so. the, yeah, as soon as uh, the sun drops, it gets down a lot colder. So wow. that's why you got to keep your uh, bedroll nice and tight so that uh, as soon as you unwrap it, it is a little, it retains a little bit of the heat. Yep. And uh, that's really where it's at. Okay. okay, so what brought you down here? Well, I came down here specifically because I feel as though my country has been taken over by a group of people and I will actually, no, not even a group of people, more just an ideology that is un-American. We have multinational corporations that are being recognized as people and being given rights to speak. Well, that's Whereas, I mean, if you look at Thomas Jefferson, I know you're familiar with the phrase, merchants have no country. So if they are indeed people, shouldn't we say they're treasonous? Merchants? And merchants are people, but maybe the business is not. Well. Well, no, I, I would specifically time. state that he was speaking in a, toward such things as the East India Trading yeah. Company, many yeah, different co co corporations, industrial. Yeah. That's kind of interesting because the more I I've come to understand what you guys are saying about corporations here, the more I realize that it's a lot more like neo mercantilism than anything else. Honestly. Yeah, I I, I would uh, to some extent agree. One of the main reasons that I like to be here is because I think that this movement would support local merchants in a better way and small businesses in a better way than our current government cont continues to do. They only look at you if you are quote unquote too big to fail, which goes the same for the teachers unions, which goes to the same for the labor unions. And I'll be honest with you, I have no problem with the labor unions or anyone else. But when we have vested interests in one particular thing and go ahead and seek out that in complete ignorance of the rest of what is going on. We're going to see our country taken in many different directions, and we should be analyzing exactly how that's happening. There are, there. hold on, if I may ask a question, there are, there are some members of the public that I have talked to that are concerned that this is becoming a tent city of sorts. What would you say to that? Would you describe this as a tent city or just a regular encampment? You know what? I, I have a job. Yeah. I have a place that I could be staying. I choose to be here specifically because I feel as though it is necessary for our voices to be heard. I understand the argument that it is a tent city, and to some extent I agree there are going to be a lot of homeless people that end up fed because of this. But isn't it better that they are fed here than that they have to starve in the streets? Of course it is. Yes. And I'm really happy to hear you guys actually want to take care of these people. Because a lot of times you hear people from Zuccotti Park where they're not really happy to try to take care of people. Yeah, and, and of course, you know, I don't necessarily believe that all of them share the similar ideals to me. As a matter of fact, I think that most of the members of this group, of this quote-unquote tent city, mm -hmm. um, would probably disagree with many of my political ideals, but I well, find myself sharpened by the fact that I'm able to discuss them with a many different people from different backgrounds. Veterans, anarchists, people who have been oppressed for their entire lives and are just now able to speak out. I feel so proud of that. Yeah, that's actually a really nice thing. I'm a former vet myself, and uh, back in 2006 when Judge Napolitano came through and talked to Boise State, about the Patriot Act, I actually decided I wasn't Patriot. even going to be able to. Yeah. 
It's not a lovely phrase. I love it so much. It's, uh, <laughs> I am a, the firmest patriot. And actually, actually, no. I believe that patriotism is um, taking away our liberties. Right. We are unable to speak out against the very atrocities that we see within our... Well, you this way, right? Uh, in the past, uh, even banks, for that matter, right? If, they, if you were being investigated by the government, they would act... You are uh, the people who take care of the funds who are asking after for information about you could actually tell you about it without any kind of just any kind of uh, retribution. Now it's a five-year prison st sentence. If they tell you. If they tell you. It's not even, quote, whether or not it was beneficial or not, whether it's a stupid law or not. You, know, you didn't break, you didn't even hurt anything. The guy they were investigating maybe make him on Scott clean and you end up in jail for five years. Mm -hmm. and, that is, and that's something I have to believe in as a patriot? But, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. I, uh, would it be okay to take a tour of the camp, sir? Sure. Yeah, let's go ahead and Let's roll. All right, then. Right here. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Even squirrels have lost their uh, Um, I need to grab something to eat. I haven't had anything since about dawn. Uh, yeah. would you like me to turn the camera off? No, for, no, no. Uh, let's go over there and let's grab something to eat. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look and okay. see what's in Oh, says. okay. I mean, uh, I'm going to yeah. put on my jacket. It's a little bit cold yeah. here. As you can see, there are a lot of tents here. A lot um, more tents than the encampments are getting, at least. Yeah. 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 Um, right here, we have the Public Education Working Group's booth, and this is specifically where you can find some information on what is going on within the movement and different ways that you can uh, advance the cause, as it were. There's also a grievances box right there, and you can just go ahead and put down anything that you personally feel in there, and it will be considered. That's anonymous. You don't have to put your name down. It's beautiful. Um, All right. Yeah, some great stuff in there. Uh, as you can see, a bunch of pizza boxes that are eventually going to be turned into signs by some people. Uh, right. I'm not a big fan of sign carrying myself, but it is a very strong tactic that we have. Right. You'll follow me. I'm going to go ahead. Wherever you want to go. Really. Uh, tell so here we have some sidewalk art. Right. Don't know who made all of it, but uh, glad that they made it. Okay, let's go ahead and see what we got here. We got a stew. It looks like spaghetti of some sort. Oh, dang, that smells fantastic. It does. That. It does. Yeah, it's all it's kind of good. Oh. Yeah, I've been downtown talking to a couple of different people, not within the movement, but. Right. Um, down at Dawson Taylor and having a really enjoyable couple of conversations. That's good. Yeah. Ah. So how are you going to keep some of this stuff refrigerated? Are they, uh... Well, thank God that it's cold as calls out here, right? Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I guess that was kind of foolish caution. <laughs> yeah. um, I believe that we're also going to be getting a couple of coolers, but as you can see, the milk is staying perfectly okay here in this Wonderful, nearly 35 degree weather during the night. <laughs> um, yeah, God, thank God for the people that have been donating, by the way, because we had Flying M Coffee Shop come by this morning uh -huh. with just a big container of coffee and so, like, I think over a dozen donuts and uh, a personal thank you to them. Mm -hmm. All right. Good, good. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. yes. All right. So we've seen the food tent. Uh, have you seen the kitchen, by the way? Because I have not. I have not seen yet. I have not seen yeah. the kitchen Let's yet. Let's go over to the kitchen. the kitchen. Yeah. Okay. All right. It is the best. All right. I don't know what this tent is. I don't know if it's where a person is staying or for some other reason. Let's stop at the free store first, though. All right. Okay. Whether are you cold? Not too cold. No, I'm yeah. good. Uh, you understand? I was an ultra grad as well. We grew up in places like Iceland and so, uh, lots Alaska, of different so. things here. Yeah. Tooth brushes. Uh, socks, wool socks, very warm at night. Very necessary, um, yeah. A couple of sleeping bags in there, lots of clothing, scarves, hats, anything that you might need. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's kind of awesome. Glad to okay. see that people, you know, yeah, they, yeah. they aren't looking for money for this. They are just willing to offer it to anybody that needs it. It kind of looks like a mess, but that's more or less <laughs> well, because it's put together that's because that people rummage through it. Yeah. Um, As I was going to say, you know, it looks like it's all nice and clean stuff, though, so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, this is a media tent. All right. 
Is it also the legal tent as well? You know what? I think it is. If you want to take a step inside. Okay. I actually haven't been in here oh, in Thank a you. while. Thank you. But this is general hub for electricity. You know, if you need to get onto the computer, write some stuff up, this is where you go. Right now, we don't have any wireless going on, but it appears that we are going to be having that in the next week or so, or oh. possibly sooner. Okay. Okay. Some awesome signs. Yeah. Um, Let's see here. We've got the first one here saying top 1% owned, 20% of the nation's wealth, and 80% of Congress. Yeah. We've got uh, corporations are not people, money are, is not speech, class action relief is not off limits. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm personally, by the way, not a big fan of what people are labeling class warfare. I'm more here for my personal freedoms. Well, I am so frustrated that. We you know, always call the class warfare back and forth kind of deal, kind of reminiscence of simply making sure that the electorate or people in general who are generally oppressed are against each other. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about. Uh, we're talk I'm not. Exa I'm not exactly for a lot of the, of the regulations and stuff that help make sure that these top one percent that we're I'm going to refer to here as top one percent, right? I have more power than I do in the sense that you know, I'm a pure free market kind of guy. If I fail, I should go out of business, or you know. Put, uh, sell off my assets and work for someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, and, to some extent, I agree with you. I yeah. do believe that there are certain regulations and forms of deregulation oh, well, that need to be instituted. I should, I should, I should make a point of saying that uh, I'm not against regulation in general. I'm just, it's, uh, I'm for regulation that works and not for stuff that it helps benefit the people who already been in business and helps keep people out of it. Have, have you guys received any visits from the? from the state of Idaho, any yeah, form of legal one. harassment? Well, I, I wouldn't say legal harassment. We did have a couple of officers come by to just make sure that we were all doing well. And those are state officers. The Boise yeah. police do not have any right, I shouldn't say that, and do not have any reason that they should be on this property because it's state property. So in other words, the Idaho state troopers are just checking on you guys? Yeah, I think so. You know, I'm, I'm hoping so because that would be really sad if they were had different reasons for that. Oh, yeah, I, I like sense. to have the most trust in my police officers as I can. Uh, I think you'd be a little careful because, uh, you know, we have this situation in Oakland knock, where... Knock. Hello. Uh, Hello. I was just going to get some supplies. Yeah. Excellent. Where we have this situation in Oakland where uh, the cops were actually ordered to go in and bust them, and they went in... In early in the morning, that's what caused a lot of the uh, what we consider the Quote, rioting. Quote unquote riots. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it's really sad because, for all we know, some of those people throwing stones, and actually, any of those people throwing stones could have been anyone. We didn't see any camera work of that, and that's that's what mildly frustrates me is that we have to take people on their word for that. Well, also, it's the fact that uh, we have there's a long history of states using uh, agent provocateurs. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, you look back to the there. '60s and CoIntel Pro. Kent God. State was an inside job. Yeah, it was. It came out just about a year or two ago. Well, after everyone involved was dead. Uh, yeah. Chicago '68. <laughs> this is Chicago Six. Yeah. yeah, Chicago '68. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you know, so and it's one of those things here. I'm not sure where I where I can really stand on the truth truther movement about the 11 truth. I uh, I stand on the fact that honestly. Even if it wasn't an inside job, yeah. and even if a bunch of terrorists did attack the World Trade Center, not the U.S. Trade Center, that was a World Trade Organization, and it was not an attack, quote unquote, on the U.S. It was an attack upon the banking industry. Right. You look back at what Osama bin Laden was saying back in the early to mid 90s, there were a I, I don't know if you follow WikiLeaks at all. Uh, we we, we do. I'm actually kind of upset to hear that Julian Assange isn't going to be. Uh, we we do. Least, uh, we we both follow it religiously. So uh, did you see the? I do. Did you see the leak that was uh, from his? I think it was brother. It was a member of his family. Bin Laden. Yes. Yeah. Stating that he was brainwashed and that he was a part of a anti-banking conspiracy. So, in my opinion, I couldn't care whether it. It was or wasn't an inside job. I think that it was a travesty, and I think that it has led us into one of the most horrible wars that we have ever fought. All oh, wars are absolutely horrible. I was actually, oh, yeah. I was actually on the Abraham Lincoln when President Bush landed. Oh, really? Yes, I was in the Navy, so mm. that was fun. Uh, you know, uh, and I can it, tell you, that we thought more or less that it was fair to say that our job was done for that one particular that mission was done. However, comma, we could have had that mission done two days earlier if he didn't decide to land. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. 
Alright. Well, let's go uh, on to another tent. Yeah, yes, no indeed. No disrespect, obviously. No, no, no. Yeah. Press off, sir. Press off, sir. But, uh, it's actually kind of interesting. I'm saying I don't even know the future movements to do the uh, wild ride away. I'm trying to be agnostic on it myself. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, that's the case with any yeah. Um Here's our medical tent. Uh, I haven't had the <laughs> luxury to have to come in here. But we have heating pads, um, all sorts of different things to help keep people warm. We hopefully will be using a wood stove in the very near future. There are a couple of problems with yeah, it. I see so you guys really need a fire extinguisher on your list there. Oh, yes. Uh, Thank really? you. I actually put that on there. Yeah. We have one for our... Uh, let's go over to the kitchen. All right. Okay. We have one for our kitchen, but we don't have one for the uh, medical. I'm glad to see you also put some party fires out there because... Uh, actually, by the way, once again, big thumbs up to ABC for helping us out with that. They have get, they waived the delivery fee. God bless them. And have basically taken away... They, they're cleaning them at cost. Nice. I am just absolutely agog with the kind of risk, with what we have been given. Yeah. And I think that much is expected from this movement because of that. And from my economic stand, my economic mind point, logical side points, yes, it makes them look like good guys. People will go talk to them later on if he's done. But you know, it's, it's ever, it's ever definite though. Tell I, us about the kitchen. So, this is great. So this is a kitchen. Let's go ahead and stand over here. <laughs> yes, As you can see, one fire extinguisher there, always important, especially when you're working with gas or propane stoves. Um, right. Some people brought these in. I'm not absolutely certain who they were, but we have two different stoves. I think that that's where they cooked this fantastic, fantastic spaghetti. Um, coolers, as we have said, but because we did have that milk out for lunch. Yeah. Um, we have some coolers here with all sorts of different stuff in them. Let's go ahead and see. Now, mostly it looks like lasagna, stuff just for later tonight, I imagine. Mm, yeah. Uh, peanut butter, always a big staple. By the way, the peanut crops right now are serious trouble because of the La Nina. I mean, oh, God damn it, I never well, remember which one it is. <laughs> but yes, because of the season that we're having right now, a lot of those crops have been killed off. And we're probably going to see a huge rocket in uh, peanut prices here pretty soon. Oh, this is why I like uh, market transactions, open uh, travel between, open trade between borders and stuff. Because well, our snacks here, local, always good. Yeah. Right. Where the U.S. government, all that good stuff. Or the U.S. Uh, local peanut butter, peanuts may be doing bad. We may not have a problem with the overseas peanuts. I may not change the price of the peanuts butter in general. Boy, I certainly hope so because I like grinding my own peanut butter down at Winco. <laughs> I, um, so, so with that, um, how, so with, with all of this, um, have you, have you guys actually seen an increase of people pitching tents here? You know what? That's an interesting question. Myself, I had to take a few steps back from this group, um, for personal reasons. I was seeking employment and I'll be honest, I, I really don't. I really need a job, and that's one of the main reasons I'm here is because I feel like everybody should have that right, right yeah, now. I think that I, right. I actually or at least people, a way to make a living. Yeah. Exactly. I think if I actually had people come in and listen to okay. us, a lot more. They've watched me eat the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We're, we're cool like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, what, what was, it? What was the question that, that I got yeah. distracted from? Sorry. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, have you seen an increase of people pitching tents? I wouldn't be able to speak to that because I think I was the last person to pitch a tent last night. Yeah. 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 Yeah, people are coming. People are coming all the time pitching tents and donating them. People just show up and they're like, I don't have a tent to sleep in. People are like, well, I have three extra ones. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. All right. Yeah, and the first night my friend went around and counted all the tents. There were over 42 tents with people occupying them. Huh. Yeah. and. And it's unfortunately we kind of reached capacity since we are going to be respecting the uh, veterans memorial for, for the, right now. Yeah. Obviously, we do. We would love to be able to take up that space as well. And as soon as right Veterans now. Day is done and we're done honoring the vets, uh, we get to take up more. I, I believe. Yeah. We get to take I, up uh, more of the park. 
Well, some people okay. are going to be uh, kind of questioning that last statement about the vets, but uh, yeah, I, I, I myself and, quite frankly, you have every right to believe what you want to believe. Well, Thank but we you. don't want to stand in the way of their memorial, yeah. especially on a day that is devoted to that. Uh, of course not. Uh, I, I got a question for you. Uh, for you mm. personally, um, do, have you have you seen a warm reaction from the uh, public? Yeah, even at night, people are driving by, honking, <laughs> shouting. Yeah, way to go, you guys! People are coming in, donating bagels and all kinds of different food. People are bringing spaghetti. Um, all Was that brought by somebody? Yeah. Oh, these, thank God. This, yeah, this, so this couple brought it, um, and they're like a, a little bit an, of an older couple, and okay. so they don't feel comfortable sleeping in a tent overnight, especially when it gets to like 16 degrees and stuff. But people are coming and just supporting us and donating and coming through the camp and saying we support you guys and way to go. And that's a oh, speaking huge confidence. Uh, speaking of um, speaking of one of the main issues behind the movement, which is banks, uh, in one of the disclosures of the Secretary of State's office that I found, uh, Governor Otter had met with Goldman Sachs three times in one day, and I was just wondering, uh, does this speak to what you're trying to do, essentially, in getting people's attention and voices getting heard? You know what, I, I don't know what he was speaking to Goldman Sachs about, yeah. and I wouldn't be able to speak to the honor of any of our politicians. I do respect them, but I certainly hope that they are talking about this sort of thing, and I certainly hope that they are going to address many of the issues that people have with money being involved in politics. Right. We, uh, we, that was one of the things that was interesting to me here, because Goldman Sachs was one of those ones that got bailed out by TARP, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, when they were going to fail, and I was like, no, you should probably have them fail. Uh, now, <laughs> sorry. The that would that be was, disastrous, as you know. <laughs> only what, for a brief time? The market uh, adjusts. It yeah. always adjusts. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, mentioning that Butch Otter actually met with these three, these Goldman Sachs employees. Or lobbyists. Or lobbyists, yeah. Three yeah. times. It was back in January, and he has been fairly public uh, against uh, them being saved by the federal government. Kind of. Yeah. So you know, we don't even know whether or not it's uh, in Goldman Sachs' favor, if it's in the favor of people in general, or in favor of everyone involved. Yeah. I got to meet Butch Otter on Halloween. Um, we were just over by the Capitol building having a little meeting. I think it was the public direct action meeting, actually. Oh, okay. And so we were over there, and Butch Otter comes, you know, walking out of the Capitol building dressed like a football, a BSU yeah. football player. Actually, and we're like, oh, have you already heard this story? Well, you missed us. We were mm -hmm. over here talking to the General Assembly, talking about the encampment here. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Recording that, they, that here, they closed by half an hour, and we split. And I guess that may have happened yeah. afterwards. So we actually waited for Match Month to talk to Butch Otter ourselves. Cool. Uh, we yeah. didn't get any on record. But, yeah, it was yeah. awesome. There were a bunch of us out there, and he comes walking out and we're like hey butch can we talk to you for a second and uh he comes over and he's in a good spirits and so um we were like we just want to know if uh we reelect you are you gonna support our right our first amendment right to um ha our first amendment right to what? Free, speech. Free, free speech. Free speech. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, officers' cars over there. I was. There was something going on over in front of the Capitol earlier, and yeah. I wasn't able to find out what it was. But uh, that is kind of interesting. We moved to go look at that one way out of here. Okay. Anyway, so Butch Otter kind of went around, gave us a number of a lady that he felt was more uh, direct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A public relations, kind of just like sort of shoving us off, here's a number, and so we were like, no, we want to know what you think about it, and so eventually he was like, yes, I will support your First Amendment right to free speech, and uh, so then he walked away, and it was a really good moment. Yes. All right. Uh, it, all, of course, all depends on what he meant by it. He may be okay if you guys are not saying this every day, but he might want you guys to be mm. so, You know, that, that, is, that is true, but I mean, we already have a very strong law telling us that we should be able to be out here. Oh. And uh, that would be that Congress shall make no law to curb... Wow, I, I just blanked half of it as well, goodness! The First Amendment, so, yes, so the, uh, there's no law for the free exercise of speech. Uh, something like that. Anyway. Assembly. Assembly. Yeah, free assembly. Press. Yeah. Press. Yeah. 
Yeah. We can't wait till they throw us out. <laughs> by, by the way, have you guys uh, heard about the zero tolerance policy that we have going on here? Actually, we want to make sure that interesting people... because one of the things that, that yes. I actually asked about on the first day you guys in Canton was we heard about some sexual assaults and rape, possible allegations of rape back in Zuccotti Park in D.C. Yikes. And of course, there was a riot, there's the riots as I put my fingers in the air just so people would listen as know I'm doing that. Yeah. Uh, over in Oakland and all the problems there. Uh, what, tell me what your zero tolerance spot. Right. You go for it. I'm going to go use the restroom. Yeah, maybe because you were here on the first day of encampment, we hadn't reached consensus yet about the zero tolerance policy. Everybody was kind of, we did that the, the next day, the second day of camping, we all yeah. voted on it. So we reached consensus that this is a sober space. And uh, we reached consensus and the first rule of consensus is you have to be sober. So we don't tolerate any alcohol, any drugs on the premises. And people, I mean, um, people have left their tents to go, you know, walk to the bars and for a drink and come back and stuff, but we don't allow anything on, uh, like, it's illegal to okay. have open containers, you know, in of state, alcohol yeah. in, a state park, in a state park, exactly. And yeah. so we are, yeah, we are not okay with it. And everybody has abided really well by that rule, right. um, especially because we all did reach consensus on it, so everybody agreed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, kind of, I like that actually. Uh, one of those things that's actually kind of interesting because you know if you really want to consent of everyone, everyone, you truly say you have to get the consent of everyone there. Yes. If you're going to talk about the majority, you might as well make it the hyper majority. Make sure the least amount of people are oppressed. Right. Yes, that's not the proper word. And here we have enough. We have a few amount of people, so it's pretty easy to reach consensus with everybody at the GAs, at the General Assemblies. Mm -hmm. But I know in Ducati Park, my friend Anthony came. He was at. Uh, to Cotton Park and he came all the way to Idaho because he loves us so much and so he uh, it was really awesome while he was here he just left today but since there were so many people in New York uh, um, their kind of consensus is a nine-tenths majority well, that's actually um, still where I'd be happy to live in yes absolutely I would be happy to live in a nine-tenths majority too but unfortunately that's not what we we're living in today yes, it's like 51 percent or something Fifty yeah. percent plus one person. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. Right. Which is always kind of funny. It's one of the major discredits towards democracy in general. Not to think it is one to believe that. If fifty percent plus one person decide that uh, the forty-nine, the fifty percent minus one person don't have the rights to their body, exactly. or anything else for that matter, and don't. That's just one of the things I wrote up about. Uh, taught, I did bad because it was way late at night, and I had only had part of it uh, down. Or else was that uh, one of the people we talked to was expressly against, say. Uh, I've mentioned this as a kind of, kind of like homesteading, taking care of this area. This is yours now, as far as I'm concerned. I'm really happy because you know, it's not my goal. But uh, <laughs> things like that, right? And I'm absolutely for this because you know if it's if it's owned by everyone, it can't be really used by anyone. Therefore, it's owned by nobody. It's yeah. do what you can, do what you want with it. As far as I'm concerned, just don't just uh, don't expect me to uh, don't come to me to ask for anything unless I'm joining you. Yeah, absolutely. We're and, not pushing our beliefs on anyone. Anyone is welcome to join us, and we are always. Uh, down to meet new people and new friends, but no, we're not gonna push our beliefs or what we want on uh, everyone else around us. We it's do a big tent movement. Right. Yeah, if we, we make march. our tents too small, we don't really <laughs> represent the American people. Right. Well, I'm a conservative, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was, I was mentioning before, before we got into something else, that uh, I went from being, uh, I'm a, I'm a uh, War bed in the way. I was on the I was on a ship all the time. So. Wow, cool navy. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. That's awesome. Do you have any cool navy tats? Sorry, that's not really. No, in there. no, uh, no. I'll edit that out. <laughs> no. Yeah. no, but I keep every so often I keep thinking about getting the golden shell back. I should have gotten with the uh, time frame. I just remember where one of the was. Uh, Sweet. Take these over to the uh, oh, thank you. I. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, would, would you like to tell a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, my name is Allison. Usually, uh, the last name I give reporters is somebody my friend named me. Since my first name is Allison, he, my last name, he calls me Wunderland. Wunderland? Yeah. yeah. So whenever I talk to reporters, I say my name is Allison Wunderland. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm 21 years old. I'm recently unemployed. I actually had two jobs, a full-time job during the week and then a job on the weekend, but they were both minimum wage. I wasn't going anywhere. I was always broke anyways. That was kind of, sort of my the thing right myself. I've got a little more at work in my uh, job right now, but it's because, well, a lot of things came down. I actually had to go get my car re-registered for seven months. Yeah. Wow. Uh, 
um, not knowing that it expired. Damn. But, uh, uh, yeah. Well, I, and I was just wondering, um, have any of you guys taken your accounts out of big banks into credit yes, unions? Yes, almost yet? all of us have. Big credit unions, though? Uh, big banks into credit big unions. Big mean banks into local tiny credit unions. Yes. I actually have a really good friend here who just recently switched to a very small credit union. Um, I think his last bank was U.S. Bank. Mm -hmm. And... He was telling me the story. It's kind of a little bit off topic. Like, I'm Go really right sorry. Ahead. Go right ahead. But, it's related to what you're here. All right. So he was telling us the story about how he accidentally, he was withdrawing like maybe $35 or something. And he realized, you know, 10 minutes after he left the bank that he had only gotten 30 out. And then maybe 15 minutes after that, his local credit union called him and said, hey, did you happen to not be, do you happen to be missing five dollars? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I am. And he's like, the bank, the credit union told him that they were gonna put the five, just five dollars back in his account because he misplaced it. That would never, ever happen with like Bank of America. Y you would just yeah. be screwed. They would just like put it back in their safe. Yeah. And it's incredible, just, it's much better. Everybody should move out of the big bad banks and put all their money into local credit unions. It's a lot safer, especially in this time. Right. Well, uh, that's it for my end. All right. Uh